Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another live stream. So, happy Saturday. How's everyone doing? It is a beautiful day here in Texas. It's about mid-60s, not a cloud in the sky. Um, I had to wash both of our both of our cars today. I washed my car, my wife's car. I really got in there, got into the wheels. I mean, oh, I'm knackered. And I went to go run three miles today, and I uploaded a video on a fragrance I've been struggling to upload a video on. It's um, a Roja Dove, actually, and it is uh, Chipra Extraordinaire. So I got this uh, little discovery atomizer, I guess if you want to call it that, uh, and Chipra Extraordinaire. It's a seven and a half mil, and you and I'm giving it some pretty good wares. How's everyone doing, guys? What's going on? Michael John, what's happening, brother? The decade of my birth. That's it. Sent of the day in honor of the era. Chanel Pour Monsieur. It is on the list, but it is not very high on the list. I'll tell you that. Actually, the list is pretty short. There's only eight fragrances here uh, because I guess the 1950s really didn't have much that I really wanted in my collection. The uh, ones that I really love, I absolutely adore. But there's some on here that many consider some of their favorite fragrances on, of all time that are not my favorite. And so you might be surprised. I mean, I have to, I had to rank them in order of my favorites to wear. But, um, you know, you, you might be surprised of the ranking. But yeah, I looked. I only have eight. And one of them is of extremely dubious claim that came out in the 1950s. We'll get to that. Can you think of which house it is right now before I say anything? So yeah, I don't know if you guys know this whole, um, I tried to touch on it a little bit in the video. It's probably not the best video, but I feel like I at least uh, put my thoughts out there. It was kind of the best I could do. I, I've tried to do this early impression video on Chipra Extraordinaire multiple times now, and every time I end up not doing it. So this time I was like, screw it. I'm just going to put my thoughts out there and whatever may come, may come, you know, I'll just, uh, I'll just put my thoughts out there and let it be. And it was the only way I really knew how to do the video because every time I tried to break it down by notes, I kept failing miserably. Um, and so I just decided to talk about how the fragrance makes me feel. Um, and honestly, it doesn't move me at all. I mean, I watched all the other YouTube reviewers. Uh, there were, I don't know, three or four different videos on it. And all of them were like, oh, it's such a complex, amazing sheep. And I, I don't get it. I, I don't get it one bit. So, so yes, I mean, I enjoy wearing it because it's a Sheepra and I love Sheepras, but you know what they did is this fragrance retailed for 1,750 pounds. That is a lot of dough because that's like two grand in dollars with the exchange ratio or something. And it came out in 2018 and they uh had kept the price there for as long as i don't know up until maybe a couple months back and then this in great britain they just randomly slashed a thousand dollars off the price just a thousand bucks just gone now it's 750. how do you even justify that as a brand how i don't understand how you had a price set for a product you're saying the product hasn't changed or are you claiming that it's changed you know are you claiming you slashed a thousand dollars of ingredients off of this? You know, I don't know. I'm sure I'm rambling, but uh, that really bothered me. How do you slash a thousand bucks off of a perfume just like that? And two of them at that, this and Great Britain ended up going to 750 bucks, which is still outrageous, but they were 1750 before. Good evening, Kevin. Good evening, Antonio. Good evening. Good evening. Ah, scent of the day. Ledule Exquis. A beauty. I wish I was wearing that over Sheeper Extraordinaire. I'll tell you that. Uh, I've enjoyed it, but um, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite, Roja. But I wanted to get this damn this, these thoughts off my chest. And now that they just cut the price, I figure what better time to kind of talk about it. Hello, my friend. Welcome. Ah, Bellamy Vetiver. Yes, I wish I was wearing Bellamy Vetiver. Creed, of course. <laughs> uh, everyone knows it's it's not even like a it's like a badly kept secret, you know, that everyone knows. 
Jedi sell for four thousand euros. You think they'll actually pay this time, or you think they're you think uh, you think our guy Andy can swoop in at the last minute and get it for half of that? Hello, hello, happy Saturday. Zaharoff leather tabak five mil, giving it a test run. So far, I'm liking it. Reminds me of something I have smelled before, but I can't put my finger on it. I figured that's kind of what some of those uh, Zaharoff tabak and and leather tabak would be. Slightly familiar, but still very well done fragrances, right? I've never smelled them. Actually, I don't think I've ever smelled a Zaharoff. I've got a sample that I plan on doing an early impression of. So we're going to do this top eight countdown. Ah, waiting for mine now. Nice. Silver Cap Jeddy, Silver Cap Demigod came in, and that Castorium is out of this world, in my opinion. Only difference from the Silver Sprayer is smells thicker, more dense. Nice. I have a vintage bottle of uh, Antaeus on the way, so that's going to be exciting. Hello, Rick. Welcome, brother. Ah, glad you made it, Vitor. It's been a while. How have you been? Ormond, man, that's a great fragrance to wear to work and stuff. It's just such an easy fragrance to wear. Ah, Ungaro, too. Do you get the uh, civet in the dry down? Do you get that? Do you get that civet? Um, oh, it's so good. If it wasn't for number one being my absolute favorite, uh, you know, it's it's always between one and two, but I just love the DNA of one. The DNA of Ungaro Polom one is that, uh, you know, it's in the same ballpark as the stuff that I so love from the late 80s, early 90s. It's in the Guerlain Heritage, YSL Jazz, Scott of Porom, you know, all, Ralph Lauren, Safari Porom. It's, it's in that category, and I just, I love that. So, yeah, Ungaro Poor Loam 1 takes the cake for me, but 2 is very, very good. Do you get that civet? Sent to the day, Matt Cat Frederick Moll, Moose Gravajor. Ah, it's a beauty. That is a beauty. It's so much better than the modern. I'll do a comparison video one day. But I think the modern has kind of turned into like this Cinnabon fragrance. Like, it's just super sweet. Um, it's kind of lost some of that growl of the vintage musk ravageur. Yes, it is, right? It is amazing. That civet in the dry down is really something else. It's a different style, the way that they used it, you know, than the civet in something like Koros or, you know, uh, Furio or something like that. But I, I love the civet in the dry down of Ungaro Porlom too. So we're going to smell these today because we only have eight. And so we're going to start with this. Um, whenever I have a small list, I can kind of spray along and smell them. When I do these bigger lists, I don't want to spray everything. So today, since there's only eight on the countdown, we can kind of sniff these. So this will be fun. So number eight, and this is the 1950s, by the way, which apparently... Um, Apparently, I was looking through some of the fragrances from the 50s, and really, there's not a lot that's really hype from the 50s for whatever reason. I don't know if it was just that time. Um, you know, I know Guerlain had a couple fragrances I saw from the 1950s that I would not mind owning one bit. But, ah, Vitor is getting his hands on Rocco Barocco. Eau de Toilette Porong, man, you're, I love that fragrance. I've got two bottles. It's fantastic. It's the kind of stuff I want to wear, you know. Uh, when I when I wear stuff like Chipre Extraordinaire today, all day I'm thinking, like, why didn't I wear something like that that I love, you know. I know why. I did it for the video. Um, although it, I didn't really talk much about the scent, the uh, review on Sheep or Extraordinaire was more kind of about how it made me feel and some ideas that kind of came to my head while I was wearing it. But um, but yeah, the price is just outrageous. 1,750 pounds for Sheep or Extraordinaire. And then they just drop it by a grand. I don't understand what Roge is doing, to be honest with you. Evening, Micah. 
Welcome. Let's spray this. So number eight on the list this is going to be a top eight countdown for me because I only have eight fragrances from the 1950s. And again, one of them is a dubious, extremely dubious claim uh, Creed fragrance. So number eight on the list is actually Diorissimo. And remember, this is my list of my favorites to wear. So I'm not saying that this is the worst fragrance. Actually, all eight of these are actually really good. Um, but this is something that I really appreciate as far as technical construction. It's kind of like Sheep Extraordinaire, actually. I kind of appreciate it for what it is, but it's not something that I would want to wear if you really gave me the choice. There's so much more from my collection that I would rather wear than uh, Diorissimo. And Diorissimo is actually an Edmund Rudnitska creation from 56. And it's a floral, fresh fragrance with bergamot. It's got this green, you know, this fresh green opening with um, uh, lilac and jasmine and lily. And of course, the big note, the one that is uh, really uh, hailed. And some consider this his best work. There are people out there that consider Diorissimo his masterpiece is that lily of the valley note that he came up with. And so apparently uh, the scent of lily of the valley cannot be extracted. There's no natural essence. So uh, according to Parfumo, it must be uh, reconstructed to be usable in perfumery. So there had to be, uh, uh, there, there had been Lily of the Valley apparently before, but in 56, Edmund Runitska succeeded with his reconstruction of this flower by using hydroxy citronellol, which is the main aroma component of Lily of the Valley. And a couple other notes. And uh, so this reconstruction, again, was so good. Some people consider it to be his masterpiece. I just, it's not my favorite to wear because it's got that. I did a whole video actually on Lily of the Valley, but it's got this. Um... It is beautiful, to be fair. It's a beautiful smell. Instantly, I'm like transported to being, you know, 10 years old hanging out with my grandmother who passed a couple years, year ago, year and a half ago. And, um, you know, instantly I'm transported to her, like dragging me to church, you know, as a, as a, as a little boy and, and smelling this on, on, you know, some of her friend, her church friends, something, something like this, you know, if it wasn't Diorissimo, it was something of this, of this time, of this era, it was probably Diorissimo. Or it could have been actual lily flowers that grew around the church. This is upstate New York I was talking about. So, you know, lily of the valley flowers do grow in places like that. But I get this like photorealistic memory of being a little kid and walking into church. But it's that fresh white floral, um, you know, nothing in here for a white flower fragrance. For the, for the taste that I have, it's not the kind of stuff that I want to wear. Are you guys familiar with Diorissimo? It's, um, it's one of those reference fragrances, you know, that you have in your collection because you want to go back to it and you want to talk about it and wear it um, to bed and stuff like that, but you don't want to, like, make it your scent of the day. This is not something I would want to wear. Uh, on the, it's not, I don't crave this like I crave Antaeus or Koros or, you know, that kind of stuff. Is it not ridiculous, right? Getting back to just how ridiculous Roja's pricing model is. Yes, you're exactly right. Yeah, you are spot on. It is way, the sweetness is way amped up. They obviously tried to um, they tried to make it more mass appealing, but there was no need for it. It was perfect exactly how it was. Nope, it, it's actually not going to top the list. Um, if you know my taste, you know Chanel for men. That citrusy Sheepra is not my favorite style. I know I've said that before. Um, but those kind of fragrances like Chanel uh, for men, which turned into Poor Monsieur, EDT, it's not my favorite. 
Uh, and mostly because the modern EDT, you really have to spray like every hour. I mean, it's an hour. It's an hour fragrance for me. And I'm not exaggerating. And normally I don't give a shit about performance and anything like that because I just reapply. When you have a big collection, you can just reapply. But I literally, I mean, you would have to reapply that every hour or two to, to enjoy it. And to be fair, the first 15 to 30 minutes are fantastic, but it's just gone. It's kind of like uh, Dior's Eau Sauvage. It doesn't last on me at all. Um, so yes, that's that's why it's it's not going to be number one. Actually, you'll be shocked how low it is for me. There's actually other fragrances from the 50s that I enjoy wearing much more. What's up, babe? Scent of the day, Chanel Misia Eau de Parfum. Uh, I don't think I've smelled that. What's that like, Micah? There's so many of those Chanel less exclusives, I don't know. Yeah, there's so many of those uh, that I would love to get to know, but I just don't know them. I agree with you, Arbaz. We're on the same page, man. Yo, Steps. Is that your top fragrance from the 1950s? After I go through this list, Bobby, tell me if it's still your top. I'd be interested to know. That smelly stream is trash. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. I just do it because I love, I love, uh, well, I love talking about perfume and many people have given me the feedback that they prefer the streams because um you know in the streams we can interact and so normally i would just do this video as like a video so what i've been doing is i've been doing my early impression video so today it was cheaper extraordinaire as my you know video video and then i'm just doing a quick uh, well not even a quick but a live stream that i probably would have made as a video in in the live so i can kind of share it with you guys Just backed up louder for men. The price creeping up. Got four bottles now. Love it. Not gold cap, though. I will take what I can get. Actually, that louder for men reformulation is very, very good. Um, I have a more modern bottle that's not the gold cap either, and I love it. You know, uh, but I think it's discontinued. Or, you know, production is basically stopped, and they're just selling off their old stock, and, and I think that's it. I'm pretty sure SA Louder's done with it. Hey, Luis. Welcome, man. Welcome from Colombia. Hope you are well. Hope you're enjoying your day. I only have to reapply every two hours. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. A couple hours, hour to two hours on Chanel Poor Monsieur. I like Misia, kind of a fruity number five. Interesting. Sorry, but I didn't see your opinion on Civet. Which Civet? Which Civet, Justin? Zoologist Civet. I have a video on it. If you like Lipstick Rose, you'll like me. See, I, I love Lipstick Rose, man. That was one of the surprise Frederick Malls. Uh, but I did get an old, I got like an original bottle. Um, so I, I don't know what the new one's like, but I am in love with Lipstick Rose. Saeed, welcome, my friend. How's Dubai? Uh, yes, it's, it's actually top seven because it is number seven. It is number seven. It's coming up. Still looking for the EDT. The EDP is a bit dense, but the dry down is stunning. Ah, interesting. I've heard, I've heard mixed bags. Some people prefer EDTs here and there, you know, with the Chanel's. I really like my EDT of Bois de Zeal. It's amazing. And I've got the EDT of number... 22. I've got the EDT of Quid de Russi. Um, but I have the EDP of Cora Mandel and it's nice. I've never smelled the vintage, but the EDP of Cora Mandel is quite nice. Um, someone sent me a sample of, oh, what was it? It was a sample of, um,
What, what are you? Where are you? Of course it fell. Ah, yes, here we go. It is Bella Respiro. Yeah, so I'll be talking about that very soon, hopefully. They sent me the uh, vintage EDT and the modern EDP. So some Chanel love coming up soon, I hope. Do you like Jicky? I love Jicky. Uh, I've got Jicky in two forms. The Eau de Parfum and the Eau de Toilette. I love them both, but I really want the pure parfum. <laughs> Canceled by the Mr. Zanshin. Don't cancel me, man. Without you, I'm just a shill. Just shilling for friends, you know, shilling for brands and friends. And, uh, you know, anyone that gives me a free little couple drops, I just say good things about. I need you. I need you to keep me leveled, Mr. Zanshin. Glad you're here, though, brother. Thanks for being here, man. I have the current louder for a minute. It's good. Maybe not in your face as the vintage probably was. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest difference is the dry down's a little bit longer. Maybe the scent's a little more intense. But the, um, you know, I would say the integrity of the fragrance is intact. Like, I can recommend you just go buy the modern louder for man. If you're not someone that wants to go hunt vintages, and there are people out there that are like that, that they just do not want to hunt vintage fragrances. They just, they just don't, you know, they just want to go buy whatever's available. Louder for Men is one you can just go buy 70 bucks later. It shows up at your door and, and you're a happy camper. Good guess, Arbaz, but no. Although they are both very high on the list. What are your favorites from Ensar Oud and Arizla? Oh, God, that's a loaded question, Ted. Um, well, just high level, my favorite from uh, Ensar Oud. Oh, no. I moved some stuff around, so forgive me. My favorites from Ensar Oud are Tiger Lust, which I would love a full bottle of, but it's super expensive. Oh, it's so smoky. There's so much like animalics mixed in with the Oud. There's like three or four types of Oud. There's Castorium and Civet, but it's like a, it's like a smoky take on all of that. You know, the smoke is very prevalent, beautiful fragrance. I, I think I might've did a video on it. If I haven't, I will. And uh, my other favorite is one of the newest additions to the collection, EO number one. Uh, this is fantastic. I'm so glad I, I was able to find a bottle. Uh, it's like um, his take on a leather. So, yeah, I have a video on it that I just put up a couple weeks ago. You can go check it out, Ted. EO number one. As far as uh, Aris Le Doré, it depends on what type of fragrance you're talking about because he's got must dominated fragrance. He's got oud dominated fragrances. He has rose dominated fragrances. Uh, and they're all just, I mean, he's got some of my all time favorites in each category for musk. Uh, the new one that I tried a couple days ago or a week or two ago, Inverno Russo is instantly one of my favorite musks. Uh, and in that video, he mentioned that he used the outside of the musk pod to make the fragrance more leathery and more animalic instead of kind of using the inside. Usually they use the inside of the, of the pod and it makes it, um, how would you describe, I would say it, it makes it maybe slightly more powdery. You know how musk can sometimes be powdery, whereas the outside can come off more animalic, leathery and animalic, the pouch itself. Uh, and then Siberian musk. Those two are my favorite musks. Inverno Russo and Siberian Musk. My favorite just out and out oud fragrances 
would be um, uh, Russian Oud is one. But this is, you know, this is a thousand dollar fragrance on eBay now is the problem. And oh god. Uh, and the other one is um, the other one would be something like uh, this Oud Zen. This is a great out and out fragrance. He also made another one called Oud Z H E N instead of just Z E N. So either Oud Zen. Um, uh, it's so good. And then probably the other uh, just out and out oud fragrance that I can recommend is, is this Chinese oud. This has really grown on me. This might beat out oud zen if I re-ranked them right now for just, oh God. You know, I, I think when I smelled this originally, and I have a video on Chinese oud, you can go hear my thoughts. Um, I don't think I really appreciated what the wild agar wood adds to the composition, you know, over the plantation oud. Like my my understanding of oud has grown a lot in the last year. And so this is like one of the biggest risers up my list. I wish I had a full bottle instead of just 10 ml. Um, as far as Bortnikov goes, my favorites are probably oud maximus. Uh, for the out and out oud fragrance, oud monarch. If you want like a chocolatey oud, and um, amber cologne is really nice for a summer fragrance. Beautiful amber gris, uh, and lao oud. Lao oud is kind of like a mix between oud maximus and oud monarch because they have added a coffee note. So that's kind of just a high level overview, Ted, of a very complex question, sir. Very complex. This Diorissimo is very nice. I don't want you to think because it's last, it's not good. It's just not something that that I uh, that I want to that I want to wear. You know, I like smelling it, but it's not something I want to wear. Okay, next on the list, we've got the fragrance already revealed to you guys, which is Pour Monsieur Eau de Toilette. Chanel Pour Monsieur Eau de Toilette from 1955, I believe. Uh, yes, 1955. It used to be called uh, Chanel for Men. And then I think it became a gentleman's cologne. And then it became Pour Monsieur. And I think this is a modern bottle. So maybe, maybe if I got an older bottle that says uh, Chanel for Men, I would see the magic in it. But I don't see the magic in this bottle. It's, um, here, I'm gonna spray some. I'm gonna spray some to remind myself of it because it's been a while. Let's see. Chanel Pour Monsieur. Yeah, I remember it being very citrusy. It's technically a Shepra, but this is something I talked about on my video today with um, Shepra Extraordinaire. You know, I like my Shepras to, to be uh, a little bit extreme in, in one area. I, I wrote down a Roja Dove quote when I did that Shepra Extraordinaire, and he basically said that, um, he said that, uh, because of the sheep, because of the way that the sheep is structured, and it's such a specific structure, you know, with that bright bergamot in the top, and um, the mosses in the base, and the labdanum, that anything that's not perfectly in tune with the sheep structure stands out. But I like my sheep to have things that stand out. I like the heavy leather or the animalic civet. Um, you know, and and this doesn't have that. This is just a very, for me, this is just a very easy to wear, pleasant citrus scent. Now, maybe the older ones that had the oak moss, because uh, you can't make a sheeper without moss. That's the biggest problem nowadays. And this has lemon vervain, neroli, and orange. And I remember that lemon cleaner. That lemon gives you that very fresh, um, 
you know, Rich Mitch says it turns to bleach on his skin. And, and luckily it doesn't turn to bleach on my skin, but I know what he means. There's a little bit of this, there's a slight hit of that chemical quality, at least in the new one it is. Maybe the old ones are more refined. In the new one, there's a slight hit of that chemical quality. Um, as it dries down, you get some of the ginger, uh, the basil, the cardamom, and the base is supposed to be cedarwood, vetiver, oak moss. The oak moss, um, it just, you know, that texture is not there. And that's why if I'm going to wear this style, for me, the reason that it's number seven it, and not any higher is if I was going to wear this style of Shepra, I would reach for this. This is this would be my go-to. So this came out. Um, this came out like two decades later in the seventies. This is why I sell Porom from 1971. I would much rather wear something like this or another fragrance that's kind of in the same vein. It's not the same. Uh, but it's actually the same perfumer and very similar time periods that it was released was um, this little bad boy, extremely hard to find and extremely expensive nowadays, Ho Hang by Balenciaga. I would rather wear one of these two personally over Chanel Pour Monsieur. Now, maybe if I get Chanel for men, which I would love to have a bottle, I think they're cool just as a collect, the collector in me would love to have a bottle. Um, but, you know, um, I just, I think that these two do better what Chanel Pour Monsieur is trying to do. So for me, this is a, you know, I'm going to wear it in the summer. I'm going to hit myself with eight sprays every two hours. And, you know, I'll probably not really enjoy wearing it. You know, I'm not going to enjoy it the way I'll, I'll enjoy wearing some of the ones that are closer to the top on this video or even you know some of the other sheepras because technically that is a sheepra it's a it's a it's a sheepra the eau de parfum is not but the eau de toilette is the traditional eau de toilette not the eau de toilette concentrate the eau de toilette concentrate is completely different um so yes let's see what's going on in this chat we got some action EDT for Sycamore, definitely. That's another one that's on the list, Micah. I do not own a bottle of Sycamore because I just assumed, you know, uh, Lalique's Ancre Noir was good enough, but I would love a bottle one day. Spirit of Dubai Oud, I, I love, I, I really like that, Saeed. If you go back and watch my videos on Spirit of Dubai, that was one of the ones that I said I thought was worth it. And one of the problems that I have with the brand of Spirit of Dubai is that I thought that, you know, I thought that, and I actually started with the oud when I went to 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 get to know these. I started with the oud so I could pick out the oud and the quality of oud and the other compositions. But the problem I had with this brand, at least the first uh, you know collection, is that, and this was very kindly sent to me by a perfume god person, by the way. So shout outs to you if you're here or if you're not here and you get to watch this later. Cheers to you, mate. Um, but the quality of oud they used in the one, their actual oud, I never felt that same quality of oud throughout the rest of the compositions at all. Like it felt like there was a big drop off as you get into the other ones. Now, some of them were, were very close. And, uh, if you go watch, if you go watch my video, I think it was Majalis that I was like, man, you know what? This one feels like actually the composition level and quality on this is much better than the rest of them. I think it was this one, Majalis. And then I went to go look at the price. And, you know, if the other ones were priced at three or 400 bucks, this was seven or eight. So it was like double the price. Um, yeah, I think it was Majalis that I really liked. Yeah, I liked Majalis a lot, mostly because it reminded me of Jordan. It reminded me of um, my family, like my time spent in Jordan. Um, and, you know, so if you don't have that association, you might not like Majalis as much as I did. It had this Arabic cookie, you know, Arabic coffee, 
uh, oud vibe. And the, the oud in there felt as close to the quality of the, from the original oud as, as I ever smelled. But I, I would love a bottle of this. It's just so ridiculously priced, you know? So ridiculously priced. So, so yes. And I would love to try the second collection or second edition. Yeah, their oud is fantastic. I might take this over the night, honestly. I think I would take this over the night, Saeed. But to be completely honest, I would take Oud Zen or I would take Chinese Oud over both the night and uh, Spirit of Dubai Oud. So, see, that's what makes the streams cool is uh, I think we can kind of stick to the guidelines, but we can also go off topic and chat about other things and then get back on track. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get the groove of, of the uh, streams. I just got a 200 mil of Hermes O Intense Vetiver for 95 bucks. Never smelled it, Steps. Good evening, Ram and chat. Scent of the night, Tom Ford Black Orchid. Guilty pleasure of mine and great on a man. You know what that's supposed to smell like, right? What are your thoughts on layering? Never. I know. <laughs> no, layering is a crime. It's a crime against the fragrance gods. Jupiter is going to come down and slap you down for layering. Ah, Alan Hansen, the man of the hour. Cheers, mate. What is your most worn plum frag? Uh, probably this. Probably Rochesse Femme. This is probably the best plum fragrance in the world. And again, just like uh, GMG was saying, don't think because black orchid is meant for women that a man can't wear it um this is absolutely fantastic uh i think this should be required sniffing for people getting into perfume and i said that in my video today i said for the people that want to kind of take the next step do not do not give roja uh one thousand $750 for this, or I know they just cut the price, but when you search this online, you know, um, Saks Fifth Avenue and Neiman Marcus and all those places have it priced at $1,865. Um, but if you go to Roja uh, Hout Lux or Roja Dove Hout Perfumery or something, it's at 750 pounds. So do not give him 750 pounds or even a used bottle for 500. Don't do it when you can get this for 30 bucks. Don't do it. This is a better fragrance. This moves me. You know, I feel like I'm wearing like an artifact. Like I really feel like I'm wearing a, an ancient rare artifact when I wear Rochas Femme. Um, just think this was made in the same year World War II ended. Think about that. Think about how crazy that is and how good this is today, how modern this still feels. I see big comparisons between I see big comparisons between MDCI, Sheeper Palaton, and Rochas Femme. This is like the grandfather of this. And they're both just so good. Uh, I, I love that style. So yes, I would say uh, Rochas Femme for Plum. I tried Frank number two, Los Angeles, and I discovered my love for the note of plum. Um, let me let me look into that. Give me a second. Let me think about what other fragrances in my in my uh, collection have plum. Plum. What other fragrances have plum? Uh, ah, Feminine to Dubois has plum. That's right. This is the other plum fragrance you have to go get. Yeah, if you're a plum lover, I would highly encourage you to get these two. These are the two. Femini to Dubois and Rochas Femme. Everything else, um, everything else to me is like kind of a step down. There are some other good ones. Like, uh, for example, you could get something like... Uh, 
low medial extreme. This is a good fragrance, but it's it's um, designer level. You know, it's a designer level, but I really like the plum and tobacco. So they added that to that, you know, cherry tonka thing, that almondy thing that um, Terry Vassar created. And, you know, if you're somebody who is just starting out, you know, level one, right? And you have been wearing Sauvage or Eros or whatever it is, and you had one fragrance, one million, and you had one fragrance and you say, hey, I want to take the next step, but I don't want to start jumping into, you know, Femini to Dubois, Rochas Femme, Chipre Palatin, but I would like to take the next step. I think this is the next step up. Like, this is a step up for me over some of the more common worn frags, just in my opinion. I think this is a better designer line. Uh, but for someone like us who, somebody who is, let's say, much more experienced, this may not move you. But I like it. Even though it's a little bit sweet, whenever you do sweet with tobacco and, you know, honey-like notes, the ram can take it. So, but and this adds this plum. And this adds this, um, you know, that almond and Tonka thing. It's it's good. It's a good designer. It's actually my favorite from the whole line. I like this better than the Eau de, Tour Eau de Parfum or the Eau de Toilet. I don't even own the Eau de Toilet. Hope that helped, Ted. Those are some big houses to get into. You better like it with 200 mil. That's right, Ashley. Have you seen my 500 mil bottle of, of uh, Terre de Hermes? That's under lock and key, but oh man, that is the craziest bottle I've ever seen. 500 mils with an atomizer on it, with an atomizer on it. It's absolutely insane. Excuse me, I have an emergency. One moment, don't go anywhere. Okay. All right, I'm back. Yeah, that's a modern, still classic. Hey Flippo. Hey man, I got your uh I got your message, your your um request to maybe stream at different times. I will try. It's just very hard for me. Like I I'm I'm I uh am trying to juggle a million things between work, family, kids, wife, working out, you know, never mind the studying I'm supposed to be doing that I've just pretty much uh pushed to the side for now. And so um so yes, I'm just trying to fit the streams in kind of whenever I can with, with life, but I will try to do different times. I, I, I will try to be cognizant about it. Yes, it is very hard to find those. And whenever you find them, the people think they're sitting on a gold mine. They think they're going to retire off of your purchase of one fragrance off of them. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say this. Russian Adam brought up a good point. Um... So he sent me, you guys might remember, but he sent me, um, he sent me a bunch of ouds and, and a bunch of other things too, but individual oud oils. Like this is um, Chinese uh, plantation oud, for example. And he mentioned that what he'll do sometimes is he'll take a dab of like this real oud and then he'll spray Rochas Femme like on top of it. So he's like, you know, that's not really layering because with layering, you're taking two completely different compositions, full compositions that perfumers made and mixing them together. With putting a drop of pure oud oil on and then spraying the fragrance, you're getting the composition just with a little bit of pure oud added. And I said, that makes sense to me. I could see that. And I could see maybe even enjoying that. But layering two full compositions that different perfumers made um that's a no-no for me that's a big no-no i would never do that 
Never, 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 never. But I think I am going to try that his layering technique one day with uh, with pure oud oil. That'll be cool to see. I have that exact bottle of Poor Monsieur. It's very fleeting, but like the better than the current formulation. It's better than the current formulation. EDT is better than EDP. I actually prefer the EDP, man. I mean, you might be surprised at that. Well, actually, to be honest, to be fair, to be 100% fair, if you really twisted my arm, I would take the Eau de Toilette Concentre. This is the one that uh, has the real oak moss in it, the Eau de the Eau de Toilette Concentre. Um, and, you know, but the Eau de Parfum is basically, Eau de Toilette Concentre is basically Chanel trying to say Eau de Parfum in an era before they had a, you know, set verbiage of Eau de Parfum, right? So it's kind of the same fragrance, even though this one's discontinued. Uh, they, I think he, they just kind of reworked it in 2016. And you can see, I mean, the, the uh, you can see, I love these bottles, even though they're just the classic bottle. I like this better than the, you know, better than this bottle. Um, but yes, it's, uh, it's, I prefer these over the regular Eau de Toilette, personally. Let's catch up on the comments and then we'll do, ah, Oudwood Intense, never smelled it. Never smelled oud wood intense, Alan. I hear good things about it. The citrus notes in the OG Chanel from M make it a bad gamble. Even some of the OG vintage Chanel Pormons are EDT, but yes, that's correct, Anuj. So Anuj is basically saying that those uh, citrus notes are the most likely to turn if you buy vintage because they're the most volatile, just like they are the most volatile to kind of fly off your skin and you get the citruses first when you spray a fragrance. They're also the most likely to turn uh, and so if you buy a citrus heavy, citrus heavy fragrances are the worst vintages to buy. The best vintages to buy are the ones that are made like a brick. Like I feel like Rochas Femme will last the apocalypse because it has all of these like thick, heavy, syrupy, resinous. Oh, it's so good. You know, I feel like Bala Versailles with that ball of civet in the base will last the apocalypse. You know, it, it's just a ball of civet in the base. And, you know, these are the kind of vintages that you want to buy. I'm very worried. That's why I don't own a vintage Chanel uh, for men. You know, it is getting warmer. It was beautiful today. 60s, you know, feels like spring is in the air, that kind of thing. Um... Goes musky on me, citrusy though. Nice. Better not be tabak mauer. <laughs> number one. No, it's not number one. Actually, here, that's a good time to introduce number six, which is tabak mauer and words. Number six. Um, here, let me spray this bad boy. It's been a while since I've sprayed some of these. Tabak mauer and words for me beats out uh, the Chanel. Uh, let's see. Tabak. Let's spray you tabak. Man, it's been so long. I had to prime the atomizer on some of these. Mm, okay. Yeah, see? So, like, instantly, this is why the tabak beat out the Chanel. Just barely. I kind of went back and forth on those two. Um, I don't know if there's different versions or different bottles or... But I think this is a better fragrance than people kind of give it credit for. So this is what mine looks like. Eau de Cologne. Tabac Original. I don't know how old this is. All I know is I paid like 10 bucks for it. You know, it's a super cheap fragrance. It's not expensive. And, um, you know, there's there's nothing on the back basically except for except for that. So I don't know... I don't know the age of this one, but I don't think it's new. I think it's sort of old. Maybe it's a 90s bot. I have no clue. I have no idea. 
Uh, but it's much more kind of my speed. So even though it does have those citrus notes in the top, bergamot, neroli, uh, petit gras, lemon, gives it a little bit of freshness. To me, it's much more about these, this woody, spicy, even maybe slightly leathery, um, you know, tobacco. There's a feeling of tobacco in here. Even though there's no tobacco note, there's a feeling of tobacco. Um, and you get lavender, you get chamomile, you get geranium, oak wood, absolute, musk, old school carnation, beautiful carnation in here, sandalwood, vetiver, and ambergris. And this does feel um, like a 1950s fragrance. This came out in 1959. When I smell this, I do get, you know, flashbacks of maybe older gentlemen from when I was younger, that kind of feeling. But I, I like it. I, I, I enjoy wearing this a little bit more than the citrus fragrance you got to reapply every hour or the super floral Diorissimo, which is nice. It's just not my speed. So that's why Tabak came in at number six. What do you guys think? Let me catch up on the comments. Ah, Rachel in the house. What's happening? What's going on? I got older Chanel to swap now that Ramsey poop on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh but why are you swapping it dunk if it's so great why are you swapping it love ho hang i do too i'm a huge lover of ho hang yeah and you know i got this little baby little baby bottle i think this came from anuj actually it's a little baby tester of Ho Hang. Um, it's fantastic. Worn it since 90s or so. All concentrations. I'm left with the same bottle you're showing. I love the EDT concentrate the most. I love the EDT concentrate the most too. But it's a different fragrance, Bobby. Completely different. Um, the EDT and the EDP are basically... The same fragrance, but this was made in the 80s when they could use oak moss, and this was made redone in 2016 with modern. You know, I think they amped up the vanilla a little bit and stuff like that. Um, but the the eau de toilette to me is a completely different fragrance. It's it's not even in the same. You know, uh, I, these aren't even considered cheaper. These these eau de parfums or the eau de toilette concentrate. The only one that's a proper cheaper is the original Pour Monsieur. Catch up on these comments. Rachel in the house. Are we ranking the 50s? We are. Uh, Diorissimo. And I'm ranking them by my favorite to wear, obviously. So Diorissimo made number eight, although many people might consider that the best fragrance from the decade. It's just not my kind of thing to wear. Uh, so number eight was Diorissimo. Number seven was Chanel Pour Monsieur. And number six was Tabac. Now we are on to number five. Number five is the dubious claim. Number five is the pretender to the throne. And it says 1950 in Parfumo. I go off of Parfumo, so I'm going to roll with it. However, uh, I think most of us in the stream, in the live, know that it probably did not come out in 1950. Don't sue me, Creed. Okay? Probably. Just my opinion. Uh, it, it probably had some uh you know it, it probably was uh some of the documents were maybe moved a little bit to this side or a little bit to that uh but on parfumo it says 1950 so i'm gonna roll with it i'm gonna roll with it but i think most people know it did not come out in 1950 i don't think because it smells like an 80s fragrance it smells like creed's take on coros and it is called Orange Spice. Okay, so Orange Spice is basically this um, spicy animalic. And many people think Orange Spice was done by Pierre Bourdon because obviously he did Coros and he did um, a lot of Creed fragrances in the 80s. 
and 90s and 2000s. And uh, so they smell this and they go, Pierre Bourdon. This was actually not a Pierre Bourdon. The guy that did the book on Pierre Bourdon, uh, Gabe Offenheim, said his name, the guy that did Orange Spice, in one of Eugene's streams. Um, but I can't remember what his name was, but it was not uh, Pierre Bourdon. But it smells a little bit like an 80s fragrance. So they say it came out in 1950. I don't know what crazy backstory they say that this was made for. But uh, the notes are bergamot, mandarin orange, clove, orange, ambergris, musk, and tonka. And basically what you get is you're left with a fragrance that uh, smells like coros for the first five minutes, you know, but not as intense, an easier take on corals. Remember, this is Creed. Creed's all about wear it any place, any time, easy to wear, that kind of thing. And um, so there's the juice. And so you'll spray this and you'll instantly be, if you've ever smelled coros, the first five minutes will remind you of coros. But then it dries down to almost this herbal, spicy i'm shocked there's no lavender listed in the note listing it feels like there's some lavender in here that mixes with the clove and spices and it dries down to that creed ambergris ambergris musk and tonka it's like if you wanted to it like if you could create a version of koros that you could wear to work like a more professional version of koros creed orange spice there you go Databases say 1950. I'm highly dubious of that claim, but it's on the list because they say 1950. But I think we know that this is probably made in the 80s is what it smells like. It smells like an 80s fragrance with the aroma chemicals, you know, smelling like Koros. Could you imagine if they made a fragrance that smelled like Koros 30 years before Koros? When I wear lemon, I wear Versace Loam. I've never, uh, Versace Loam. Ah, yes, I do like Versace Loam. I wish I had a vintage of that. That's on my vintage list. Anuj in the house, Versace Loam Perfumi version, famous or bust. Desandra's, ah, beauty. What do you make of it, Dunk? I originally only sampled Oud Wood Intense on paper and hated it. Love it on skin. That is the risk of sampling on paper. It is. You really want to go on skin. Not sure, but modern is just fine. Get it at Ross. Uh, Versace Loam. Yeah, the modern is still good, I think. Howdy, howdy. Pure malt, original recipe. Ah, beauty. I love pure malt. I love uh, pure Havan. I love taste of fragrance. I love pure leather. Um, they're so good. Pure coffee's good. On skin, it becomes 3D and the oud comes out more. I honestly prefer to the OG oud wood. <gasps> I need to smell this uh, oud wood intense one day. Cheetos just dropped a new flanker, tangy chili. Majalis was a little too much for me and Arabic frags are right in my alley. I love Majalis. It was so good. It was probably my favorite one that I would, if I was going to buy one of the Spirit of Dubai's, that wasn't just the Oud, because the Oud is probably the one I, I think is is the best value for money. It would probably be Majalis or maybe Taroth. Taroth, I thought I really enjoyed, if memory serves. Is Taroth the blue one? Yeah, the, the blue one. Um, The black one with the rose, I forget what it was called, was okay. Um, the green one, the leather, I thought I would love and I didn't. I mean, it wasn't bad. I would I, I would wear it. It's just not the type of, you know, if I'm going to wear leather, I'd rather just wear Bellamy. Honestly, I mean, that's just what it, that's just what it is. Agreed about layering. It's like watching two movies at the same time. Yeah, you don't layer full compositions. The 13th trial of Hercules was to unlayer Harris perfumes. <laughs> I'm very excited about Roja Taifu. Do you know if it's the same composition? I don't. Um, but I did a video on the one that came that was uh, 
that was the exclusive for Fortnum and Mason. I have a video up on my channel about it. And uh, if it's the same, it's not worth $750. I'll tell you that right now. Do not give that man $750 for Taif. Do not do it. I'm telling you right now, don't, don't do it. Do not do it. Just in case you haven't heard me, do not do it. Don't give them 750 bucks for Sheepra Extraordinaire. Don't give them 750 bucks for, uh, you know, Great Britain. Although if you had to give them 750 bucks for one, it would probably be Great Britain. Um, Rochas Femme, Plum and Cognac is a good plum. There you go. That's a good one, Rachel. I like that, but I didn't love it. Honestly, though, sometimes I'll layer by spraying on something new and a bit of the base from the previous end still lingering. Sometimes goes well. Sometimes I get an extra shower that day. <laughs> Frank LA are hard to find. I think they're discontinued. I've never heard of that even. Uh, I think this is an 80s bottle because this is the Parfum de Toilette. So you can kind of see the tester writing on the back. This is the uh, Parfum de Toilette. I don't know why I'm showing you this camera never focuses anyways. I can go back to doing these streams on my phone. It's just sometimes the sound quality will get weird if you guys remember. The video is much better, but the sound quality will get weird on the phone. Here, the sound quality is better, but the video is weird, right? Yes, it is a genitalia. Yes, you're exactly right. You're, 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 you're getting warm. That's right. <laughs> you're on the right track there, GMG. Hey, Ram, welcome. I got a 96 M Mikalaf Shashka with peach note, but smells more like plum. That's a brand I haven't really dived into. And I definitely take some pages from Scent Spirited to buy Oud. The resemblance is too obvious. Oud was launched four years before the night. It's definitely not a clone, but they do share. I think they share aspects too. Yeah, I think they do too. Uh, Spirit of Dubai Oud was four years. It says 2015, mate. Spirit of Dubai Oud came out in 2015, according to, uh, Parfumo. And the night came out in 2014. Are you sure about that four years earlier? Unless Parfumo is wrong, which they're usually not. I just got that Guerlain Extreme in the new packaging. Don't know if it's been reformulated. I have not smelled the red cap. Yeah, I don't know either. Guerlain usually does good reforms. Do you like it? Um, it's very wearable. Very wearable plum, tobacco, almond, tonka. Should I get my third backup of Guerlain Ombre Etter now? Wow, a third backup. Those are so hard to find. Uh, how did you find three of them, Ram? Oh, I love it, though. Oh, it's so good. It's up there for me with Bois Mastidio or Sange du Bois de Et, if you prefer the older name. And uh, Ensemble Mathique and Queer and Tons for my favorites. I hated Santal Royale, though. Lucky Scent still lists the one half. Tom Ford Ombre Leather is the only fragrance I purposely layer. What do you layer it with? Funny how marketing worked with those Chanel's. Dun Wang by Parfum Persana. Never smelled it. Using oud oils to layer just brings a different dimension to the scent, especially with vintage animalic scents. Yes. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I got to give that a try sometime. Wearing oud oil and musk moisturizer as a base for Western products, part of the Eastern wearing ritual. That's fascinating. Yes. That, that is a layering I can get down with. You just put some pure oud on and then spray the scent on. That's what Russian Adam says he does. Uh, that's what he told me he does. But he said he'll never layer two, you know, pure compositions together. 
I believe black bottles help preserve a fragrance. I never bought a turned Antaeus yet, but also Antaeus is just pure castorium piss. I mean, speaking of a fragrance that'll, uh, you know, last the apocalypse, I've got an 80s bottle of, of Antaeus coming very soon. Rich must have the oldest formulation of Rocha's Femme. Yes, in the in the tall bottle. Yeah, that came from Anuj. I think that's like a 70s bottle, actually. Love Diorissimo. Glad it's on the list. It has to be on the list. I only have eight fragrances from the 50s, Rachel. <laughs> Orange Spice. Yes, that's right. Micah called it. Yes, he did. That's an interesting take. Yeah, I think you might be right, but I love Abbey Rouge. I love it way more than the EDT of Poor Monsieur. You can wear chorus anywhere at Seattle. It smells nothing like how it is in the air. Yeah. Wait, that don't make sense. <laughs> Rachel, how are those atomic dogs doing? Has anyone ever tried the Frederick Mall Siage machine they have in their flagships? Every time I went there, it was out of order. Never even heard of that, GMG. Just like McDonald's ice cream machines. <laughs> I sent to the day, Bulgari Black. It's supposed to be unisex. The vanilla is a tad smoky to my two-ounce bottle of Midnight in Paris. Nozzle broke, so I... Mine did, too. Mine did, too. Shitty design. Great bottle, but shitty design. Not only that, but mine leaks a little bit from underneath the uh, underneath the bottle. I smell Diorella. Boy, oh boy, yes, Diorella is fantastic. Um, do I have it here? Yes, I do. And I've got it in the old houndtooth bottle. I only have a little bit, though. You can see not much. But enough, enough. DRL is a beautiful Shepra. Actually, very overlooked. And if you like DRL, you will definitely like Frederick Mall's Le Parfum de Therese. I think it borrows, um, I think they borrow from each other. Beautiful. All right, let's do this next one. Like those reviewers that spray in front of them and waft the air with their hands to encompass themselves in the scent. Thoughts on Vin, Eau de Hermes 150. Hold the thought on Eau de Hermes. But yes, if it's a copper cap or later, pewter cap is the preferred one for me. Um, but if it's the copper cap or the pewter cap, 100% Arbaz, 100%. I'll take Plum Japanese anytime. It's a crime that is discontinued. I've never smelled it, Alan. Giorella from 72. Okay, back to work. Break is over. Cheers, mate. Thanks for joining, Machete. Is it a pewter slash bronze cat? Exactly. That's the question. April White, welcome. Micah says the modern Oda Hermes are just fine, though apparently discontinued. I know it is, Paolo. Trust me. I know. I'm missing out not being in the Facebook groups. Yeah, I thought when I when I smelled Spirit of Dubai's Oud, I thought they borrowed from the night personally. Um, I mean, I still prefer the Spirit of Dubai Oud, I think. Yes, very easy reach. Great date night fragrance, as they say. Yeah, I layer fragrance with pure oud. I don't think that's considered layering. To whoever does the same, I suggest layering oud with epic man. Oh, God. I got to try that, Saeed. Have you tried ivory root? No. I have not tried many Zerzhoffs, but I have a bunch of them right here. These are all Zerzhoff samples someone sent me. So I'll be doing these live streams where I try Zerzhoff for the very first time, where I try them for the very first time. There might be a lot of cursing and throwing things and flipping over the table, but I, I will do it. Are we talking Indian oud or something else? Because with Indian oud, I can see it bringing out the, the sweaty scent from Epic Man. And Epic Man has oud in it. I must say it's a bit feminine for me. I think it has neroli. Yeah, and yeah, it, it is. I think it's traditionally feminine, but it's beautiful. 
does get pretty sweaty, but in Dubai, nobody seems to mind. Or even here, I'll still wear, I'll wear whatever the hell I want. They don't like him, fuck him. Said, you live in the Oud capital of the world, man. Just lucky, I'd say. That's right. Absolutely. You can wear your Oud any, I would, you know. Uh, but to, again, I would wear Oud Zen to work. I would wear Chinese Oud to work. But I work in an environment where um, it's pretty laid back. You know what I mean? In all of our, the only people around me are employees. There's no customers or clients or anything. So not going to like offend somebody other than if they work with me, which then they can just suck it up, right? All right, next, we've got number five on the list. Actually, wait, Creed Orange Spice was number five. Number four, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to get a dipstick for this bad boy. This is a splash. This is a splash of from 1953. This is a splash of Oh de Joy by Jean Patou. And actually, I have the box of this one. Too. Look at this little beauty. Flip it the right way, shall we? Short ingredient list. I wonder why it just keeps not focusing. It's annoying. Uh, 30 mils contains alcohol, ethylic parfum, eau de mineralise. I guess that's mineralized water. Just beautiful. I love Jean. I love uh, Jean Patou. What a house! What an absolutely fantastic house. Uh, so, Eau de Joy came out in 1953, and the original Joy came out in 1935. It's almost like this animalic uh, floral. See, and this is kind of to the point I was trying to get across. I don't know if I did a very good job doing this video on Cheaper Extraordinaire today, but I was trying to get across the fact that. You know, many people say, oh, you can't bring price into the equation when it's 750 pounds or 1750 like it was before they cut the price on cheap or extraordinary. You absolutely could bring price into it because you could buy everything on my table and still put money back in your pocket compared to cheap or extraordinary. So this is a great example of that, because for me, let's dip this dipstick. I get just as much, if not more, pleasure wearing Eau de Joy than I do. Oh, just a thing of beauty. Mm. Than I do cheaper, extraordinary, you know, a hundred times the price. I think I paid 30 bucks for this bottle on Mercari. Oh, it's so good. Um, no one talks about this, by the way. And if you like fruit notes, I know we were talking about plum earlier, but the peach in here is delectable. It's fleshy peach. Uh, creamy, ylang lang Beautiful aldehydes. There is tuberose, so it probably leans traditionally feminine, but God, it's so good. Probably real uh, Mysore sandalwood, if I had to guess. The civet in here is a little bit more turned up than, you know, what you would smell in something like Sheep or Extraordinaire. Yeah, I, I would take Eau de Joy all day. Oh, it's so good. Let's see what the comments are saying. What's up, Geffy? Welcome. Not a fan of Oud whatsoever. Uh... Even the real good stuff. Have you ever smelled like the individual oils in Nuge? Wear what you love, not what they say you should like. Yeah, Lanyard Smith's a uh, legend. It's nice, don't get me wrong, but you have no idea how much they overprice oud here. I usually have to go to Thailand just to get some good oud at a decent price. Wow, that's crazy. Is that a vintage bottle of Devon on the site, Anuj? Ah, Micah, if you've smelled Desandra's and you have never smelled De Devon, get that Devon that Anuj has. I've never smelled Oud whatsoever. No, Alan hates Oud. 
It is indeed, my friend. It's just like mine. Because I got mine from Anuj, and I can vouch for it. It is fantastic. Um, it is, you know, if you love Desandras, get Devin. And if you love Devin, get Desandras. They share, uh, they share kind of a, a, a soul. They, uh, they really feel like they share. Oh, God, it's so good. It may be my favorite, like, green masculine sheep bro. the way that um the way that they made this and it's a um bernard sean creation i mean you can't go wrong with the bernard sean creation like devin so yes i would highly encourage you to check out devin if you're a, if you really like uh eugene's new release to sandra which i do i tried zerjoff alcott and mamluk something too sweet and synthetic about i know exactly what you mean I mean, I haven't smelled those, but I know exactly what you mean when it comes to Zerjoff. Louder for men. A beauty. I hope you backed up some bottles, mate. Yeah, I like the modern louder. It's the only one I have, but I think it's good. Hey, man, so feminine to Dubois, is that a very feminine fragrance? And I don't do projection and sillage and all that stuff, but uh, it, it's... it's um, Feminine to Dubois was put out by a couple of the greatest perfumers of all time, Pierre Bourdon, Christopher Sheldrake, and Serge Luton. Serge Luton is actually listed as one of the perfumers of Feminine to Dubois. And it, it stands for the femininity of wood. But this perfume basically caused an uproar in the industry because back in the day, they didn't make it's it's labeled as unisex now. In this bottle, it's labeled as unisex originally it was a feminine fragrance in 1992 it came out with with uh, shiseido so if you know some of shiseido's older works like um this is a shiseido i absolutely adore basara basara it also was known as basala but Bas basara is unbelievable oh my god it's so good um and but it originally came out under Shiseido in 92. And then they re-released it under Serge Duton in, in 2009. And the reason it caused an uproar is, that, uproar is that this is a wood fragrance. And you didn't make woody fragrances for women back in the day. So this is like cedar with clove, plum, honey, spices, but lots of wood. The wood in here is fantastic too. Oh, you know, many perfumers, if you ask them, like, what fragrances do you wish you could make? One of them is number one on the video. And this is actually one that comes up many a times. Uh, a lot of them will say something like Dior Eau Sauvage or Femini to Dubois. This comes up a lot as if you could make one fragrance you didn't make as a perfumer, what would it be? A lot of them say Femini to Dubois. This is like, you know... But if you're comparing this to modern masculines, you may not like it. But for me, I think it's one of I think it's one of the greatest, most pivotal fragrances of all time. It changed kind of the way that the market thinks about um, feminine fragrances or whatever it is. Completely unisex. Trust me. But you have to have an open mind if you're going into it. Um, it's much more masculine, like. I love, like I mentioned earlier, I have a hard time wearing Diorissimo because that big white lily of the valley floral. Uh, I could wear this all day. This is a uh, easy reach for me. Easy reach. Uh, so good. So, so good. If like vintage animalic leathery scents, just try it out by like three Militar and see it's magic. By just applying a dab. That's crazy. Yeah, that's my favorite of Eugene's releases. Uh, have you smelled, Devin? I have not smelled a florist. Nope. I've never smelled a single florist. I've been told that Russian Adam is planning to release part two of Russian Ood. He said he, I don't think he ever will. I don't think he can recreate that Russian Ood. That's part of the problem is that... Um, Whenever he distilled the oud for this, 
he basically said that he rented out an entire, like the entire warehouse's distilling operations to try to do a round two. And whenever he smelled it, he said they did exactly the same thing. But whenever he smelled it, he said it basically smelled like wet gym socks. Like it was a completely different smell. And he's like, I can't, I can't use that. And he hasn't been able to recreate it since. That's why the first one's so special. So no, I would be shocked if he put out a part two of Russian nude. I don't think it's in the, I don't think it's in the works at all. Hey, DMR. But I know there's a collab between him and Dmitry Bortnikov coming out very soon. Yeah, the Bortnikov collab. That's it. That's the biggest news this year for. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah, man. Anytime. No, but I I think BDK is kind of lumped into that. Parfum de Marley, Initio, BDK, right? They're all kind of one, right? Or they're all seen as one. My boss wears Devin, so I've smelt it. It's fantastic. It is. Oh, I love Devin. I'm in love with it. Okay, that's news to me. No one, no one told, he didn't tell me that. He told me he had a hard time um, recreating it and he, he doesn't know if he'll ever be able to. He bathes in it. It's just a strong fragrance, dude. Devin is so strong. It lasts all day on me. Oh, it's so good though. Oh, as soon as I smelled Desandra, I went Devin, 100%. And Eugene... If you're watching, get Devin, dude. Buy this bottle from Anuj before he sells them all to other people. Buy it. I'm telling you. Oh, if it's the modern, you're going to blow them out with that vintage. Ah, nice. Yeah, there's just so many brands. I would love to try. I'd love to try some florists. I love leather oud. So that was number four. We did number four, Ode to Joy. Number three, we're getting into the big hitters now. We are getting into the big hitters now, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Number three is Cabochard. How about this beautiful bottle? Look at this. Fantastic from a bottle standpoint. I am a huge fan of Cabochard. This is also a Ber Bernard Shaw. Speaking of Bernard Shaw. We were talking about him with Devin. He also did Cabochard. He also did Aramis Aramis. And he also did my favorite Estee Louder of all time. Ah, you like the REM t-shirt? Yes, that's right. One of my favorite bands of all time. Um, so he uh, did my favorite Estee Louder of all time, which is Azure. Uh, let's spray this. It's been a while. You like my Kemi? Car. Someone sent me these. I forgot who sent me these. I think it might have been the uh, YouTube, the uh, eBay guy that I uh, gave a shout out to the other day. Miasto Kelsey. I think he sent me these Kemi blotters. They're nice. They're thick. Cabo Shard. Here we go. Mm, that's so good. Someone was telling me that the modern Cabochard that they re-released a couple years back is also very, very good. It's a good reformulation. They said, oh, I love this. It's a little bit like um, a fragrance I've been talking about a lot on the channel lately, Ben D. I think I like Ben D more than Cabochard. Because Bandy is more ballsy. I like my fragrances to be, you know, to have some intestinal fortitude. Bandy just slaps you in the face from the very beginning. Just walks right up to you and slaps you in the face with that leather, tobacco. You know, it's rough. It's butch. It's challenging. Cabo Shard's a little bit more wearable. Uh, at least the version that I have. So you get this aldehydic, fruity, um, citrusy. But... You instantly get that tarragon, which gives it this um, 
almost like this anisic like quality with geranium and rose and jasmine and elaine. There's also this slightly cigarette quality here. And of course, there's castorium and oak and oak moss and leather and tobacco, patchouli, vetiver, sandalwood, musk in the base. And to top it all off, there's this orris root, which you know makes the fragrance 3D, adds a little bit of powder to it, but oh, it's good. It's so good. It's it's a proper leather shepra. Cabochard is a proper leather shepra. Very, very good stuff. It's dark, but yet it wears lightly, but projects well. No, I have not, but that makes me very sad. I love Tuscan leather. If you like Tuscan leather, you can get yourself a bottle of Clive Christian C for men. If you want to be bougie, if you want to save some money, honestly, just get this. But Yukawam, this is my favorite clone of all time. This is a fantastic clone. Um, I usually don't talk about clones on the channel, but this is so, so good. So, yes, this is the reason I don't have a backup of Tuscan leather and because I have a bottle of Clive Christian C for men. Oh, Cabochard. You are a beauty. Let's see what people are saying. Honey Oud from Floris is nice, but that leather. Yeah, I've never smelled any of the Florises. Ramsey is sitting in the corner. Where? In the spot. Kimmy frequently rocks my world. I know you love the Oud. Does the honey make it pissy, Micah? Kemi by Kemi is nice. Not to me. Makes it kind of sickly sweet. Kind of in the ballpark of B from Zoologist. Really? That's surprising. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. My eyes. Ugh. Let's knock these last two out so we can blind sniff these final two zoologist fragrances. We still have squid and seahorse to try. Still have to try squid and seahorse before the day is out. So let's knock this uh, 1950s. Yep, Rasasi will nuke a room. Tuscan leather is weak sauce anymore. It's sad. That's uh, that is sad. Sorry to hear that. That makes me very sad. I love Tuscan leather. Rank top clone fragrances. Um, this and Zion are probably my two favorites. Zion's a clone of uh, Roja's Elysium. If, you know, if you don't want to spend the money on Elysium, those are probably the two best clones I've smelled. Sartorial was a slow grower for me, but it gets better every wearing. I think it got discontinued. If Penhaligons did that, they are fucking stupid. Which I don't. I have zero Penhaligons, so that's kind of how I feel about them, anyways. But. Yeah, I love Sartorial, man. Yep, I love Sartorial, too. It's the only Penhaligans I would maybe consider actually buying. It's a gentleman scent, indeed. Which Penhaligans do you like? If I had to try one outside of Sartorial, I want to try that Petra, that new one they released. It also has roots to the home country for me. So, so yes, I would, I would like to try Petra. All 
All right, so number two on the list is um, a classic. Let me write it on here so I don't forget. It is a classic. It is number two is Guerlain's Vetiver from 1959, the very end of the decade. Um, the newer ones, I'm not too up on. Okay. So Vetiver is probably one of the greatest masculine scents ever created. Um, I think it's one of the best Vetivers of all time. I sort of trust Papa Persolais. He's, uh, for the most part, done okay by me. He let me down a couple times, but, you know, can't have exact taste as somebody else. So, Vetiver. Oh, man. You know, when I smell stuff like this, oh, it's just, it's, the more I smell Vetiver, the more I'm convinced it's the greatest Vetiver of all time. Like, I don't think there's a better vetiver. I think Guerlain's vetiver is it for me. Uh, Ancre Noir, I really love wearing. But it doesn't have the class of Guerlain's vetiver. Guerlain's vetiver managed to do an outrageous trick for me. It manages to hit a home run on both the citrusy opening and the tobacco-y, you know, almost like uh, a working man's fragrance, you know, tobacco and spice and nutmeg. And that vetiver note is spot on, spot on perfect. One of the best vetiver fragrances I've smelled. But this bottle, um, Rich Mitch did a video of Guerlain vetiver through the years. This bottle, I think, smells like a fresher version of the different, some of the different versions of Guerlain's vetiver. So this is fantastic in the heat, which is great for me because I'm in Texas. So nine months of the year, it's perfect. I wouldn't wear this vetiver in the cold. I'd wear one of the Ancre Noirs or even Roja's vetiver parfum. I'd probably wear that in the cold over this. But in the heat, oh my God, this just shines, man. Just absolutely shines. And this easily could have been number one on anyone's list. Uh, it's just one of the best tobacco uh one of the best uh it is it's also maybe one of the best tobacco fragrances no one says that but it's one of the best vetiver fragrances in my collection oh and you know it took me a little bit to warm up to vetiver as a note i told you guys this on a previous stream but when i first really got into fragrances i thought vetiver was a note that i didn't i didn't like you know that it wasn't for me and it kind of is one of those notes you have to take your time and get to know because, you know, if you're the compliment beast guy, if you're the siage projection uh, compliments and, uh, you know, longevity and all that stuff, you may not like this because this is not how this is judged. You can't judge this based on how many compliments you get. Most people nowadays, if they smelled this on you, would probably think back to their grandparents or something like that. But for me, as someone who loves fragrance for the art of perfume, oh my God, what a beautiful vetiver this is, guys. Fantastic. Oh, it's grown on me so much. This is one that has really, really grown on me over the years. I love it. Absolutely love it. So, Guerlain's Vetiver at number two from the 1950s. Since you're a vintage fan, the Pen Halligans I think you like best is Asawira. Carnation will make you melt. Ah, okay. And SF got shut down around the Floyd the Floyd riots in San Francisco. Many businesses did. Your long vetiver, my last blind buy for a while. Gold cap inbound. I think I can't go wrong. Rich said one of the best scents he's ever made. He's a smart duck. <laughs> It is such a beautiful bottle. Such a beautiful fragrance. Agreed. It smells really close to the vetiver. Chas Atar with Guerlain class added to it. Yes. And that Rue Chas 
Uh, Atar, thanks to Ajay for sending that. It's an amazing thing to get to know, you know? Mm. Traditional Indian Atar, Ruchas. I still need to get to know this, this civet bomb too. Most folks like vetiver as a supporting note. Yes, that's right. That's exactly what I thought too. Uh, but the more I discovered vetiver as a main note, and Persolase calls it this boiled cabbage smell or boiled celery, and he's not wrong. But it's the the verb the the words he uses makes it sound off putting. Um, because vetiver is grass, but they don't use the actual top of the grass. They use the roots in the vetiver. That's what they use to, to actually make the essential oil. They don't use the um, grass part. It's the roots. So people think, oh, it's just grass. What's the big deal? But there's all kind of different vetivers that, you know, can be used. And sometimes vetiver can come off like more smoky if it grows around a volcano where there's been eruptions and you get that um you get that smokier deep dark richness sometimes it's brighter and the thing the reason that i say that this is the best vetiver scent of all time is because even though ancre noir for me does the trick of uh i always like things deeper darker richer heavier and more animalic more smoky more wood, all of the things you can think of that's my affliction. I like the oud more animalic. I like the musk more animalic. I like the leather more leather. And yet, this this walks this line between, you know, all of these different facets of vetiver. I feel like you get in here. Like I feel like it's like a kaleidoscope of vetiver. It's so so good. This has really, really grown on me. Oh, so good. Could easily have been number one, but number one is such a special fragrance. I couldn't put it anywhere else but number one. That is crazy. I didn't know that, GMG. Uh, the Vetiver Extreme in that same bottle, I never smelled. I have this Vetiver Extreme. Here, let's let's spray this while we're just kicking the shit here. I'll tell you if I can pick out some differences. This is fantastic too. Speaking of maybe best value for money, this was fifty bucks for hundred mil. Um, I got it for fifty dollars. So where's my, where's my vetiver? Let me let this settle down. So off of the very opening, and again, it's on paper, so take it with a grain of salt. It's not skin. But off of the very opening, it seems to open up slightly darker and slightly more spicy. Um, which you would think I would like, but I don't. I actually prefer the regular original Vetiver. So even though Vetiver Extreme um, is still a fantastic fragrance, I think a great Vetiver, great value for money. Um, on paper, it doesn't have that, you know, earlier I said it's like that kaleidoscope. You get a lot of different facets. Um, maybe the bottle needs to open up more. I need to get more air in it. I just got this a month or two ago. Um, but it doesn't have that. Yeah, see, this just has this, this brightness about it. It's this. It really smells like bright summer days, beautiful, you know, you're looking at a perfectly green grass in front of your house. 
This is missing some of that balance. Now, I think if I remember, I wore this to bed once, and I think as it dried down, I remember thinking I liked it more and more and more. But the opening, I don't think, really competes with just the regular vetiver for me. In the try list. Um, well, I've got some Zerzhov, yeah, samples we're going to talk about on live streams together, but other than that, I mean, there's none that I, that I want to buy. No. Yeah, that's a great point, DMR. It was the debut of Jean-Paul Guerlain. That's right. The original Vetiver was Jean-Paul Guerlain's debut. And you know what's funny is he um so they they basically said that he was given the job to do vetiver because they were originally going to just confine it to South America that it was supposed to be like a South American scent and they thought oh, I was like a play thing like you know give Ger give Jean-Paul Guerlain like the toy project to play with that no one cares about and he took that and he just ran with it and gave it everything he had. What a creation, man. I am just bowled over by this vetiver. It's it's grown on me so much. Try that Rue Huss in Texas heat, and it'll be a completely different experience than using it now on the call. Oh, I bet. I have I bet. Flying to Houston on Valentine's still live and Teus in the heat. I like it in the heat too, but usually I'll wear Antaeus Sport. But Antaeus in the heat, Koros in the heat, there's fragrances in the heat that do like completely different things. There's one on eBay. I The one that I really want, and maybe I shouldn't tell you guys this, but the one that I'm hunting for, at least keeping my eyes out for, is a bottle of uh, Vetiver Frozen. It came in this bottle and then they discontinued it. Never got put in the Listerine. Never got put in the Listerine like the Extreme did. Um, so, yeah, see, now the Extreme's opening up a little bit more. Slightly a little bit more darker and slightly more spicy, but it still has that Guerlain Vetiver, you know, DNA. But I want the one that says, I want the Vetiver Frozen. That's a tough flanker to find. Probably my favorite note besides patchouli. Did it grow on you or did you love it from the get-go? Was thinking the same, Duncan. Guerlain Extreme is even better. Famous, I got the one in the green box. I think it's like $300. Don't pay $300 for that. Just get this. Just get this one, Dunk. Guerlain does good reformulations. There's no reason to think that. Now, I haven't smelled the extreme in this bottle, but my guess is this is perfectly adequate. Yeah, don't don't buy Guerlain Extreme, Vetiver Extreme for 300 bucks. Forgotten about Guerlain better? Yes, I know what you mean, you know, but like on a perfect spring day, you whip out Guerlain Vetiver, there's nothing better when you want to be in nature. If you're going to go be outside, it's beautiful. Pointed out to me, the smokiness in Smalto Poron comes from the Vetiver. Ah, that's an interesting shout, Dunk. Yeah. The back of my collection. Do you have any Zerja? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about those, but I don't have any that I can tell you about right now. I just know I got a bunch we're going to talk about, but they'll be new to me. So you'll know when I if it catches my attention. I've only seen them in the Listerines. The Extreme is Trey, one that came in the gray box. The one that came before in the green box. Don't know if it was reformulated. Roger has a vetiver after trying danger. I believe I was 
keep my respective alternatives and the money. Yes, the vetiver is probably the least worth its money, honestly. Um, I've heard some people say it compares to Tom Ford's gray vetiver. And it is very nice, again, but to me, it is, um, you know, I forgot what I paid for this, but I think it was like 80 bucks or something, 80 or 90 bucks maybe. I know it wasn't even 100. It was less than 100. And this is $500 retail. This is not five times the fragrance. In fact, this is a better vetiver fragrance to me. Um, this shares kind of the same issue that Vetiver Extreme has. And I think it's a nice fragrance, but it kind of takes a little while to get there. And it feels just like Roja made a Sheepra and added some extra vetiver in the base. So, so yes. If I was going to sell one Roja fragrance I have a full bottle of, that would be it. Desandra's, man. You're going to dig it. What's up, Mike? Roja PDV56, I'm so in love with this fragrance. So hit me up if you're interested in a bottle. My buddy Armando has a bottle of um, PDV47 signed by Roja Dove. Not that you guys give a fuck about that, but uh, $400 shipped. So let me know if you're interested, man. If anyone is interested, let me know. And the one I other I can't talk about. If you can't find the sport, just wear the current formulation. It's so weak, no one. Ever. <laughs> there was an Antea Sport thirty percent full on eBay for one twenty five. Wow, I love Antea Sport. Yeah, Invasion Bar Bar is good. Are you asking if I like it? Yes, I do. I've got a 30 mil decant. It's fantastic. It's so good. It's a great fragrance. Also a great fragrance to wear in the heat, but there's a little bit of uh, violet leaf and there's a little bit of vanilla, but I, I think it works great in the heat. For the Parfum Cologne of Vetiver from Roja, really? I did not like the Parfum Cologne. You know, I don't like musky stuff. <laughs> See, now the Vetiver Extreme is really starting to come on. So number one, uh, we're an hour and 48 minutes in. Yes, it is very castoria me. Yeah, it feels like Antaeus minus the myrrh, and they substituted a couple notes. I actually did a comparison video you guys can check it out. If you go to the Chanel playlist, you should see it. The uh, Antaeus versus Antaeus Sport. It's fantastic. But I did a comparison video. You can check it out. Um, both of them are so good. So, number one, what do you guys think it is? Before I... Uh, actually unveil it what's the what's the consensus number one pick how well do you guys know me i want to see at least one person guess it before i unveil it i would love to smell that queer gatamante i've never smelled it or i i don't even think i've uh smelled african leather but i heard it was shite it's a green herbal leather compared to a spicy green leather. Actually, 30% full of 100 mil. That's worth 125 bucks. From the 1950s, Duncan. From the 1950s. We're doing a 50s list. Hey, there you go. Oda Hermes. 
1951. Uh, this is my favorite Edmund Rudnitska, actually. And um, oh, I love this stuff. So, so good. This is, uh, I think it's a masterpiece. I think it's, this is a fragrance that um, it's decanted. This is a fragrance that, look, look at the bottle too. My God, just a work of art. Absolute work of art. And so for me, um, uh, uh, it's so, so good. Uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's the best Edmund Rudnitska creation. It has, you know, think of all of the perfumes that it's influenced from Cartier's declaration uh you smell it in you smell it in uh fragrances like queer d'ange uh, i haven't smelled the new violet voilinka but if that's anything like queer d'ange it's probably a little thank you to oda hermes i mean even terra de hermes has a slight hint of oda hermes when you very first spray oh it's so good. Loam, Agance, and Queer Garamante are their best offerings? What? Better than Shepra Palaton? It can't be better than Shepra Palaton. This is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. And even this... Uh, Invasion Bar Bar, I'm really loving. I'm loving that. Might be buying two Oda Hermes when I go back to Texas. Yeah, it's backup bottle worthy. I'll tell you that. It is. It had to be Hermes, of course. Timeless masterpiece indeed. I mean, hell, the bottle itself is just a work of art. I don't know if you can see the number etched into the back of the bottle. Number 1710 etched into the bottle. Just class, man. Everything about what Hermes does is just class. These were amazing. So yes, Oda Hermes, man. It's my favorite Edmund Runitska. I love wearing it. I love that animalic leather. It's supposed to smell like the inside of a uh, of a Birkin bag. And actually, when Hermes came out with it in 1951, um, they actually... I can hardly smell poor Monsieur, and I just sprayed it an hour ago. On the card... It's crazy. But uh, yeah, the whole point was they gave it away for free when they whenever you bought a Birkin bag. Yes, and just blue. You're exactly right. It's fantastic, Black Monday. Yeah, it's it's one or the other. It's back, you're right, back and forth. Rochas Fem, Oda Hermes. I wouldn't be mad at you for, for vouching for Rocha's Femme. <laughs> I think it does have a little bit of musk. Uh, no, I don't actually no. I think it's more about the, uh, I think it's more about that birchy leather with spices and, and lavender, like a spicy animalic woody uh, leathery fragrance. No, there's no musk. There's no musk in Oda Hermes. No, this sp this splash is actually a vintage uh, short ingredient list. So this goes to the pewter cap. I don't know if you can see. But yeah, that's the ingredient list right there. Just a thing of beauty, man. A real thing of beauty.
And uh, so this actually corresponds to the pewter cap. And then there was the copper cap and then the clear cap. Yes, it's such a fantastic fragrance. And that's what that's actually what Edmund Runitska said. He said a perfume should shock you. Let's put these zoologists on my skin. I'm curious what, what these zoologists are all about. Let's do this seahorse. Do you guys know these? Good old seahorse. Oh, I got to think about that. Oh, I don't like that. I do not like seahorse. Hmm. This is a Julian Raskine, eh? Maybe it'll get better in the dry down. I didn't like the opening. Do you guys know this? Seahorse. Hmm. Balmy, sunny sunlight trips across foamy turquoise waves, sending rippling halos onto the coral below. On the lagoon floor, anemone and seaweed sway in unison, limbs pumping to the rhythm of the current. However, hovering above, hovering among the coral branches, a group of seahorses gazes shyly on. The pulsating beat calls to them and two pair off. Their tails intertwined in a delicate waltz. Soon their passion is spent, but the memory of the dance lives on. For the pouch of the male seahorse tenderly cradles a precious clutch of eggs. So I'll just seahorse invites you to wade through a vibrant coral garden this unisex scent turns expectations on its head with such surprising couplets as tuberose and seaweed. Sage and neroli and fennel and vetiver, this delightful melody will sweep you away on a wave of joy and abandon. This is the least favorite Julian Raskinet fragrance I've ever smelled. I do not like this. Kind of just smells like a blue fragrance. Ooh, let me get back to you on that one. I'm going to do a video on Oud Ispahan soon. Let me, let me think about, let me think about that. That's a tough one. A Peace Marine. Yeah, a Peace Marine. I've never smelled a Peace Marine actually, but declaration. Absolutely. I got 500 mils of copper cap Eau de Hermes. It's so good. It is the best. Honestly, it's my favorite Edmund Runitska. The top throws you off from the from the fry down. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting lost. Current one is black cap. Copper before and clear even before. I think current one's black. No, no, no. You got it wrong, GMG. Current one's black, then clear, then copper, then pewter. So pewter's different from the current black one. It's like a... Matt, it's like a matte gray, the pewter. Yeah. Yeah, black cap's the most recent. I'm sure it's still fine. Seahorse was a letdown. Okay, yeah, I wanted to test these final two zoologists. Um, Seahorse is cardamom, fennel, am ambrette, absolute. <sighs> Maybe a little bit of this fennel-like smell, but... Clary sage, tuberose, neroli, algae absolute, vetiver, ambergris accord. Hmm. Do you guys know this one? I wanted to test it for the first time. I vote Oud Palau every time, but one man's trash, another man's treasure. Is squid better? Squid is going to be better, right? 
squid is a saline barrel. <laughs> These are the last two zoologists that got left over from my previous blind sniffings that I didn't get a chance to try. Just, just shoving them in at the end of a... Uh... <laughs> oh, good man. Uh, nothing. I just sprayed seahorse on my skin and it's not for me. I don't like it. It's not good. It's kind of just like a boring blue fragrance. Let's put a uh, squid on. Victor Wong told me to go easy on him about how shite these atomizers are. It's not his fault. I just, I hate these. These are like my nemesis. Yes, squid is much better. God, I can't believe Julian Raskine did this. I would never in a million billion years guess Seahorse was a Julian Raskine. I like squid. Squid's good. The vast ocean swells and contracts, caught in the relentless tug of the moon. Beneath the surface, a school of squid emerges. Strange elastic forms propel from the deep in a frantic search for sustenance. They are not alone. It almost smells like there's a little hit of incense in here. Their predators lunge only to be foiled by blinding jets of murky ink. The hunt ends abruptly as a monolith materializes, greedily engulfing all in its path. The massive sperm whale dives, leaving a temporary piece bobbing in its wake. Decades on, relics of the battle resurface, lumps of ambergris expelled by the whale and polished by the salty currents wash ashore. Zoologist Squid sings a song of the sea, a melancholic tale told through tangy brine, crisp incense, and sweet cloudy ink, all unite by the moody aroma of ambergris. That's good. I like squid. Um, pink pepper, solar silicate, incense. Ah, there is incense in here. Black ink accord. Yeah, the incense and the black ink go together. Salty Accord, Apopanax, Ambergris, Benzoin, and Musk. Wow, they did a really good job. Um, this was a uh, Fragrance Foundation 2020 Art and Olfaction Awards finalist. And it didn't win. It was a finalist. Um, yeah, they did a really good job capturing the smell of that black ink in the ocean. That's what it smells like. If you imagine an incensey, very appealing black ink in the ocean, and look at the coloring scheme that they chose. That's a great representation of the fragrance. Squid is way better than seahorse. Seahorses. It's kind of shite. Squid's good. Can't win them all, but I like squid. That's good. 2017 Dior Ispahan's really good. I mean, they are quite similar. I honestly can't barely detect differences in the dry down. You're not going to like it. Squid, I think it's very similar to Aiden Bob. I've never smelled the original Aiden Bob. Micah, is that true? What's the most relaxing perfume you've ever smelled? It would be a great video as well. Uh, well I did that tea video. Tea is a fantastic relaxing note. You know, you could do something like um, this is a very relaxing fragrance, Mont Blanc Star Walker. It's discontinued now. Can you believe that?
So what's interesting though, is it doesn't smell like a blue fragrance, not in the sense that, um, you know, not in the sense that a big Ambroxan bomb blue fra fragrance does. This smells, this smells, um, more incensey to me, at least in the top. Maybe the dry down dries down to a blue fragrance, but I don't get blue. Like I don't get, um, I don't get the blue of something like Sauvage, you know, Parfum. Yeah, that's that's very Ambroxany. This is much more. Um, this is much more interesting. That's a very interesting take on a blue fragrance. If you guys are calling this a blue fragrance, um, I guess if you had to own one blue fragrance squid, wouldn't be a bad one. Seahorse, I did not like at all. That deserves to be bashed. I can't believe that's a Julian Raskinet. I am shocked. Absolutely shocked. He should stick with doing ouds and ambers. Squid is inky goodness. That's right. Ah, I stand corrected. I don't dislike it, but I get so much of Aiden Bob from it. I've never smelled that. Maybe that's why it smells so unique to me. Squid is the one that influencers all loved. Peppery and blue. I don't get that blue yet. A lot of incense -y. There's this maybe dark purple. Dark purple is a better color for me than blue. It, smell, it does smell like inky. But I find it's not as deep, well-rounded, or complex as Oud Palau. Interesting. What do you think of Portray? Oh, I love it. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I got it right when it came out. And look how much of it I've used. Look at that dent. Just a solid dent, mate. Be oh, fuck. If you like 80s fragrances, this is one of them. Oh, guys, so good. So underrated. Portrayal Man and Imitation Man are two of the most underrated amouages. And look at the dents I've put in both of them. So, so good. Portrayal is vetiver, uh, patchouli. From memory, I think it's vetiver, patchouli, violet leaf, cade oil. Like this uh, smoky cade dry down. So it smells different from the usual amouage incense that you're used to smelling. Um, because it's cade, not that silver Omani frankincense you're used to smelling. Man, squid is a very interesting take. It's a little... <clears throat> I don't think I would buy it, but I'm impressed with it. Oud Ispahan is mandatory in the OG formula. New one is a shadow. Yeah, it's hard to find those OGs, though. Starwalker is discontinued. That's right. Uh, at least according to Parfumo. Let me check again, but I thought I saw that. R. Walker. 2005. Yep, the production was apparently discontinued. So yeah, if you want uh, a relaxing fragrance, Star Walker is really good. It's um, pink pepper, star anise, sandalwood, cedarwood, amber, musk, and bamboo, I believe. Is it bamboo? Yes, it's bamboo. It's bamboo and ginger. So it gives this very, you know, woosa, uh, relaxed feeling. I've done a video on Michelle Amarak. You can go check it out. I'm going to rank it one of these days. You'll have to wait for that one, Mr. Inglewood. But I will tell you that, uh, you know, Zeno is going to be up there. Um, this... It's got a magnetism for men. This will be up there. I love this stuff. I'm sad I only have this much juice, but I love it. Oh, it's so good. Um, 
Duchi Porom 1 will be up there. Yeah, I'm with you, Dunk. I need, um, I, you know, if it wasn't for the channel, um, like if it wasn't for the channel, I wouldn't have been wearing Sheepra Extraordinaire today. I'd have been wearing Bellamy or Antaeus or Koros or something. So I'm a bit biased towards it. Nice. I haven't tried any eight and bobs. The only ones I don't have are Mystique and Chomps de Provence. OG Udis behind his leather Ood with Rose. Yeah, I think that sounds right. I think that sounds right, Paolo. For me, it would be Zeno Davidoff. At least the current formulation is super soft. The vintage uh, Lancasters are amazing. I don't care for the sales gimmick, but I don't mind the fragrance. You mean the zoologist? Yeah. Yeah, this pretty much wraps up our zoologist, you know, testing. I didn't uh, break out Moth because I have a full bottle, so I'll do a full review on that one day. Ah, you're here, Ajay. Welcome. Yeah, we ranked our 19 favorite 1950s fragrances. Just to recap, it was uh, number eight was Diorissimo. And my favorite to wear, I should say. So it was Diorissimo, number eight. Uh, number seven was Chanel Pour Monsieur, the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Toilette, Pour Monsieur from 1955. Tabak uh, from 59 was number six. Mauer and Wirtz, Tabak, number six. Number five was uh, Creed's Orange Spice, according to Parfumo says 1950. My guess is this is probably really an 80s composition and that Olivier Creed went into his candlelit room in his castle and wrote up a story uh, about Orange Spice. But yes, it says 1950. So it's on the list. Um, not so famous YouTuber. <laughs> Good to see you. I don't think I've seen you here before, my friend. Um Number four was Ode to Joy. This is fantastic stuff. Where's my blotter? Where's my blotter of Ode to Joy? This came out in... Oh, yeah. This puts Sheeper Extraordinaire on its ass. Oh, that's so good. See, now this is a feminine fragrance I could much more easily wear than Diorissimo. Oh. It's like this animalic floral um it smells like there's real ambergris it smells so high class everything smells amazing in those old jean patus number three was uh cabochard a bernard chant I mean, you can't go wrong with cabochard it's uh where is my cabochard sample nope it's better for extreme where are you nope that's tabak what did i do with it Oh, it fell. I tried to get away. The bastard. Oh. It's a little bit like Bandy and a little bit like Aramis. Um, a little bit like Aramis, Aramis, a little bit like Bandy. You know, it's got some of that going. And then number two was Guerlain's Vetiver. One of the best vetivers money can buy. Oh, God. I wish you guys could smell this. And number one is uh, one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Hermes. Oh, the Hermes. 1951. That's my ranked 50s list. And then we tested Seahorse on my left elbow, which I hated. I do not like Seahorse. It smells like a boring blue fragrance. Squid is the one. Yeah, I like Squid. Squid's the one that is a unique take on a blue fragrance, if you want to call it that. Hear no evil, see no evil. Like JFK wearing eight and Bob. Yes, that's right. Just close your eyes. Almarac claims he's done Fahrenheit. It's always been pretty unclear to me who made that there. Yes, uh, Fahrenheit was done by... Uh, 
No, I don't think it was Almarac. I think it was uh, Maurice Roger and Jean Louis Swizak. Jean Louis Swizak, the guy who did uh, Bellamy. That makes a lot more sense. DMG. I'm still pissed off that Dior canceled my order for 40 mils of leather oud with the apology that stock was newly depleted. I was a day late. That sucks. Yeah, now I know it's not an oud scent, but it's what made me want to find real oud and lead to a journey of finding Indian oud. The king of ouds. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Howdy, not so famous. Azaro Visit and Squid have some similar... Ah, that's an interesting shout. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I think you're exactly right about that. I never thought about it, but I think you are spot on. Yeah, I think you're spot on, Ram. Alan adores Indian Ood. Creed level storytelling. Oh, let's look up what the story is for Orange Spice just before we go. Just for shits. Just for shits and giggles, huh? Let's see what they said about it. So Creed, Orange Spice. Oh, you can get a limited edition Orange Spice bottle for $550 on eBay. Let's see the backstory. Can I find the backstory? Uh, come on, where's the story? I want the story. I'm getting a bunch of fluff here. Created for one of England's most flamboyant dramatists. Here we go. Here we go. Created for one of England's most flamboyant dramatists and authors of the 1800s, 1800s, Creed Orange Spice is a wild mix of bergamot, orange, neroli, ambergris, and spices. Its mischievous lightness of spirit is completely carefree, yet clearly the result of a classical method. Citrus oils are generally described as fresh and our top note. Oh, now, what is this? Parfums Rally? Oh, no, we're going into, uh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the backstory, damn it. Creed Orange Spice backstory. Tell me about it. Um... With its potpourri name, evocative, this is from a place called Mimi Frau Frau, uh, evocative of the houses warmed up by the inner glow of fall and winter, Orange Spice by Creed ends up evoking warm interiors, yes, but in particular that of an 18th century tavern filled with smoke of civet scented tobacco stuffed in clay pipes. Uh, this is just some guy writing about it, I think. Created in 1950, Orange Spice readily captures an old world and old regime atmosphere where streets, where cobbled streets reverberate with the sound of rolling carriages at a ye old civet cat sign is dancing and creaking in the cold wind. I was wanting to see what Creed says about it. I want to see what Creed says about it, damn it.
All right, if anyone knows about it, do let me know. I've never been too interested in perfume history. It all seems like a bunch of bull chite. I just want to know if smell good. Most of the best perfumers are dead or retired anyway. What would you shortlist for your zoologist we need to try? Uh, Sacred Scarabs, number one. That's my favorite. Moth is good. It's um, It's got a little bit of every... It's, it's a very complex fragrance. Elephant is the one that was really surprising. Uh, elephant, uh, you could try Hyrax. Hyrax is animalic. And T-Rex is... Hyrax and T-Rex are insane fragrances. Those are the two crazies from the bunch. Um... Camel is very, very good. It's a great dried fruits, incense, fragrance. Uh, and But from the ones that I tried, from the ones that I tried, let me let me get my, my Dom Perignon sample box out. From the ones that I tried, and you guys are going in the box, so actually this works out perfectly. You're going in the box for later. Uh, I liked Chameleon. Chameleon reminded me of um, Kenzo Jungle Elephant a little bit, but it was good. And Elephant was definitely one of the stars of the show I was not expecting. And let's see, what else do we have here? Harvest Mouse was pretty good, but I did a full video on Harvest Mouse. You can go check that out. It was okay. It reminded me of an Oud, though, even though it was like a beer even though it was a beer um what else was good i didn't like oh musk deer was good this was a good musk fragrance if you like synthetic musk fragrances this is a good musk and um what else what else ah nightingale Nightingale and um, Elephant were the two, these were the two that I had the least expectations on that they came through. Nightingale and Elephant were the two that kind of shocked me a little bit. Um, but, and you could add Squid to that list. Squid was good. I'm, I'm, I'm digging Squid. But people are comparing it to this Eight and Bob. I've never smelled it. Never smelled Eight and Bob, but Squid's good. All right. Let's catch up on the comments. Then I got to bounce. You still got to do Bandi, Gray Flannel. Dude, it's nothing like Bandi. Gray Flannel is nothing like Bandi. Bandi is much closer to Aramis. Actually, Bandi is much closer to something like Cabo Shard than it is Gray Flannel. Um, Bandi is closer to something like, uh, you know, as Azure by Este Louder. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of Bandi in Diagolev. Yes, I have them both. Uh, I prefer Ensemble Mathit, but Afternoon of a Fawn is very good as well. It's just, uh, it's a really good take on an in on a on a uh, immortel there's a fantastic note of immortel and rose in here but honestly i'm gonna wear immortel instead of doing like an immortel rose fragrance um i would rather wear immortel and leather and just buy 1740s by histoise de parfum uh so i would go with ensemble mythique ensemble mythique is fantastic it's um it's a very introspective uh, fragrance. Really makes you look inward. The ambergris in here mixed with the uh, rose. I think it's one of Terry Vosser's best works. It's amazing. Ah, interesting. <laughs> And Sar tells better stories. Hmm. <laughs> I would love to. I would love to own a bottle of the vintage. 
I only have a, I've got a 2018 bottle, I think, of Leather Oud. It's very good, though. Oh, Bandy and Gray Flannel. Man, I don't get that dunk. I got to check that out. Yes, that's the thing. So I would say if you want to smell what I'm smelling, get the bottle that looks like mine. Get either of these because I uh, made a mistake. I've told you guys this before, but I made a mistake and bought this bottle because it said uh, Bandy Femme. And I figured, yeah, it's a feminine fragrance. Sure, this is just a different formulation. No, this is a completely different fragrance. Totally different. Nothing like, I was pissed. I'm going to sell this probably. Uh, not that it's a bad fragrance, just not what I wanted. I wanted this. And I had this. And Anuj found me a backup of Bandy. So I'm very happy. Shiva, what's up, brother? <laughs> ah interesting good to know yeah someone mentioned um Cellier as being one of the, the best perfumers of all time and you know if i just smelled this i would agree like i talked a little bit about bandy in my shipra extraordinaire video today um Super Extraordinaire just does not move me. This does. Like, I would much rather wear Bandy. <laughs> Pretty sure no one would be able to afford Creed even in seven, 1879. Yeah, Chipmunk is was a good nutty. I remember that wasn't bad. Ah, you're back in Jersey. Good to hear it. <laughs> Uh, the Shiva World Tour continues. I'm going to check my P.O. box uh, Monday for the Shiva Frags. Monday afternoon, see if they're there. Well, my throat's given out two and a half hours is usually my top, so I'm going to bounce. I hope you guys enjoyed the top 1950s fragrances in my collection ranked and checking out the two new uh, zoologists or the final two zoologists. We did our blind sniffing. Uh seahorse which just kind of feels like a boring blue fragrance and squid which is much much more interesting so do leave a like um waiting on my flight back to the south nice good to hear it man get home safe brother uh do leave a like on the video the algos love that shit leave a comment thanks for being here and, and spending some time with me this saturday and i'll probably see you guys tomorrow cheers guys